All right, here we go. Question number two in our college algebra homework number five in my lab math wants us to determine the vertical asymptotes of the graph of this function. So here we have a rational function. Uh, I've got this copied down up here on the screen so we can look at how to work this and find uh, vertical asymptotes. Now, what I would like you to understand first is that the denominator cannot be zero. So when you're finding vertical asymptotes, it's kind of like finding the restrictions of the rational function. Uh, however, to find specifically vertical asymptotes, if your rational function will reduce, you need to reduce it first. So here's what I notice. I notice that the denominator, every term, has a factor of x, and so I'm going to need to factor out an x. So the numerator is x to the third. If I factor out an x, that's going to leave me with 5x squared minus x minus 22. That took an x from every term. And then remember x to the third, what that really means, it means x times x times x. And I can see that there's a common factor of x that can uh, divide out. So to find the vertical asymptotes, what I really need to do here is set the remaining part of the denominator not equal to zero. And so I'm sorry, not equal to zero would be if we're looking for the restrictions. If you're looking for the asymptotes, you need to set that equal to zero in salt. So we've got 5x squared minus x minus 22 equal to zero. And we need to solve that for x. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'm going to try factoring. Now I have a technique, it's called the 3R method for factoring a trinomial with a lead coefficient. And the first R says to remove. We're going to remove the 5. And what we're going to do with it is we're going to bring it here to the 22 and multiply. So if I multiply 5 times 22, that's 5 times 2 is 10, and then that'll be 11. And then now I have a standard trinomial. I can factor it as I normally would. So if I read the signs, the signs are going to be different, plus and minus, x and x. And now I need numbers that multiply to make 110 that subtract and make negative 1. And let's see, numbers that multiply to make 110, the first that come to mind are 11 times 10, and 11 minus 10 is 1. Now remember I need a negative 1, so I want the 11 to be negative and the 10 to be positive. Got that? 10 minus 11 is negative 1. 10 times negative 11 is negative 110. So now that that is factored, I can do the second R, which is replace. And I need to go back and ask myself, what did I remove? I removed the 5. Now I need to replace it. And notice you replace it in front of each X. And then I can do the third R, which is reduce. So in the first set of parentheses, I can reduce by 5. But in the second set of parentheses, 5 and 11 won't reduce, and so that's just going to come down. So 5 divided by 5, that's going to leave me an x. 10 divided by 5, that's a 2. And then the 5x minus 11 comes down. And now this is factored completely. That's the original trinomial factor completely. So now I can set each factor equal to zero and solve. All right, here we go. Moving the two, that's going to give me x is negative two. Moving the 11 is going to give me 5x equals 11. I'm then going to have to divide by five. And you know what? I like it improper. Let's leave that improper. And those should be our two asymptotes. Now, 
before I plug that into my lab math, I want you to notice down here I've got that graph graphed in Desmos. And we can see here and here it looks like there's going to be two vertical asymptotes. So I'm going to use Desmos to check and see if I'm right. So the first asymptote I think is correct, x equals negative 2. And do you see how that vertical line fits nicely right in there in the red graph? So the graph here, look, it's approaching but never touching. So that vertical asymptote looks correct. What about the other one? x equals 11 fifths. And do you see that also fits nicely right in the red graph? The graph is approaching but never touching. And so those are our two vertical asymptotes. Now re recall, remember I said that zero uh, has to be excluded because the denominator cannot be zero. So if I let x be zero, that would make the denominator zero. But notice that is not an asymptote. It's not a vertical asymptote because the red graph doesn't approach zero and never touch it. Although if we click on the graph and drag over, it will tell us that, <laughs> if I can get on that, it does tell us that the graph is undefined at zero, which is true. It's just not a vertical asymptote uh, since the uh, rational function reduced and that we lost that x there. All right, here we go. Finally, let's check our MyLab math. x is equal to negative 2. And then it says use a comma to separate your answer. So we're going to say comma x equals 11 fifths. Vertical asymptotes blah, 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 is found to determine the zeros that are not also zeros of p of x. Factor both of the, if a is a zero, but the is a vertical. Okay, so what did I do wrong? Oh, it's idiot. Do you see it already had the x equal out there? So what I'm trying to do here is show you how you can screw this up by not paying attention. It already had the x equal, so I just need to provide the two numbers that x are equal. There you go. Man, well, I made a mistake, but I hope it was for your benefit. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.